Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of the Hare Krishna Project podcast. This is episode number 120. A big thank you to everyone from all over the world who continues to tune in to watch our podcasts every week. Uh, I appreciate you being with us. Do not forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you haven't already, to hit the subscribe button uh, so you can be kept updated about future podcasts and video productions from the Harry Krishna Project. Uh, and or if you're watching this on Facebook, which is the other way you can watch our podcasts, please like or follow, if you haven't already, the Harry Krishna Project Facebook page uh, so you can be kept updated about what we're doing here at the Harry Krishna Project. As you know, we do, don't just produce podcasts. We do book distribution. We organize Harry Krishna festivals events uh, and lots of exciting things uh, that keep me out of trouble um as you know here on this podcast i'm always keen to interview a, interview a variety of guests um and i'm very grateful for all the guests that come on this podcast and who are very willing to open up and share their story um and that might happen in this episode we'll have to see um, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome our 120th guest. It's Rahul Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Narada Prabhu. It's great to have you with us. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, so, Rahul, one of the great things about you uh, is I don't I don't know much about you, which means I will be just as surprised by your answers um, as our guests or viewers or will be at home or wherever they're watching. So Rahul, we're going to start with the first question. It's the first question that every guest gets. Please tell us a bit about you and where you are from. Hare Krishna, everyone. So I am originally from uh, Kolkata in India. I have, got, I have grown up there. I've spent my couple of years of my childhood there. And then my family moved to South India in a place called Hyderabad uh and i have grew up i have grown up there uh, and i've learned culture both of north and south so i have a cultural um i would say cultural interest in both north and south and i have done my education uh and currently i reside in france in south france i uh work here uh in the domain of digital marketing uh wow. so yeah that's some something about me Wow. Digital marketing. That sounds quite impressive. Um, and um, uh, so Rahul did share with me before we started recording that he's actually in a beautiful city called Nice, um, which is which is wonderful. I was actually in Nice last June uh, for my brother's wedding. And I remember it being very hot, actually. Um, but it, it's a, a it's great... still it, it's actually getting hotter. Like uh, <laughs> I'm saying it's like 25 degrees right now. And it's the hottest probably in Europe. Wow. Yes. Well, maybe I will return to Nice again this year. We'll have to see. Uh, You're welcome. I, uh, thank you. And if I'd known you were there at that point, we could have met up. Um, uh, so, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can definitely. Uh, yeah, I can just picture it now being in Nice, the beautiful, the beautiful beach and all the trees and everything. Um, fantastic. And Calcutta. I've also been to Calcutta um, a few times over the years. Um which of course has a lot of historical significance in terms of its links with Great Britain. Um, I think it was the capital of India, wasn't it, under the British Raj? Yes, British Raj, exactly. And um, I remember when I first visited Calcutta in 2013, I remember thinking it looked a lot like, well, some of it looked a bit like Britain in terms of the architecture and, and the statues. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, Calcutta, what an amazing place. Um, OK, tell us a bit about um, how you met the devotees or how you discovered Krishna consciousness. Sure. So it was, uh, I would say it was evening of uh, Ram Navami and my mother, she was in the temple. My mother actually has been a pious person. Uh, she's the sweetest person you can you can probably get in this world today <laughs> and i'm very grateful for that she is my uh, she has been my spiritual master ever since uh, my childhood uh, and uh, so when uh, she was there in the temple on ram navami she found out that behind the temple there was a big uh, hall with um, nice kirtan going on uh, mridanga kartal and with 
the the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So my mother, she got influenced by that. And she took a small card for the upcoming festival, uh, which was Narsimha Chaturdasi. And on that day, uh, my mother uh, gave me the card and she said, you know, you got to go, you got to check them out. So I went there and I met uh, Brahmacharis there. I actually sat for the whole lecture and I was uh, a curious person to know about uh, life in general. And um, I was also looking for answers. And that's how I found out uh, the Hare Krishna movement. And I met Brahmacharis there. I feasted there. I had an amazing day that day. And after that, I took their small course, which is called uh, Science of Self-Realization. Uh, it was a six-day course, and I did it over the next uh, couple of months. And I finished it, and I I would say that I found all answers I was looking for, which is what's uh, the, the purpose of life, what's, mm -hmm. uh, is there life after death, and how to be happy in our lives. And I also tried to apply the process uh, which is uh, chanting of holy names, uh, devotional service. So so, so like that, I got in touch with uh, ISKCON devotees and thankfully they were living not far away from my house back in Hyderabad. Uh, so I went to their small ashram. Uh, that ashram was uh, actually uh, by uh, run by Bhakti Vikas Maharaj uh, devotees. And I went there. I actually became uh, serious in sadhana in just six months. I used to wake up 4 a.m. in the morning. I used to go there. I used to chant. I used to do devotional service. I used to attend uh, Bhagavatam classes. Uh, and after that, I used to go to my uh, college. Uh, and once I, once I, once I got serious in devotional service, uh, uh, many brahmacharis actually uh, gave me the chance to go on book distributions, uh, pandal programs, and nam sankirtan on the roads. So that was a pretty interesting phase. And some of my interesting moments during book distribution and Sankirtan was uh, just after a year after I joined the ashram, I was given uh, an allocation to go to a temple, uh, which is of Ram. And I went there with a book stall uh, of uh, Bhagavad Gita and Ramayan. And I I found so many pious people coming to our stall and I did a personal best of uh, 10 Bhagavad Gitas, 10 Ramayans and 40 small books. So I I got a good I got a good collection in that day. And I have uh, and on that day I did a lot. So I got so many uh, nice prasadam such as rasgulla and Kichri. So mm. that was actually a very interesting phase in my preaching life and then uh, we also used to do door-to-door -door book distribution in India and uh, yeah I, I also got the chance to uh, visit uh, Bhakti Vikas Maharaj uh, Vyas Puja around uh, three or four years later and it was held in Vrindavan, uh, Mayapur so I also got to visit some places across India and I also spent some time across various ashrams such as in Mumbai, uh, Pune, uh, also in Kolkata, Vrindavan, etc. So this is some, these are some of the moments which uh, I would say were interesting in my my devotional service. So, so just for context, how long ago was it that you uh, you that you joined uh, or you went to visit those brahmacharis that your mother discovered via the card? When when did this happen? It was back in 2015. Okay. And then uh, I was there serving in, in, in that same ashram for around four to five years. So you, moved, in, you I, moved into the ashram, you lived there? Uh, I wouldn't say I lived there completely since I was living not far away from that ashram. So I was doing my, uh, you know, my I was continuing my education, but I was, whenever I got chance, I would give myself full time. To that ashram yeah like at weekends and holidays and things and just exactly yeah yeah and and how so how long so that was 2015 was nine years ago how long were you involved with the with that particular ashram of bhakti Pakashwami? how long did that carry on for it carried on for uh four to five years uh and also the reason why i left the ashram 
was because I came across uh, various things which I saw through my eyes and also via social media and articles posted online, which actually turned out to be true, uh, which is ISKCON is not what you see, uh, what's going on around. So that made me question my, my faith. And I actually rechecked myself, whether if it's true or not. And at the end, I came to a conclusion that, uh, well, I I might be doing something wrong here. So, so what were some of the things that you started to see or witness, some of the things that you started to feel uncomfortable about? Uh, well, the first thing was, uh, so uh, this, this was back in 2019. Uh, the first thing was, okay, okay, so the ashram was also there next to uh, a Ritwik ashram. So the Ritwiks, uh, I also was a little bit in touch with them. I, st I wanted to know what are Ritwiks, what, what, what they're doing. So the senior brahmacharis, they told me not to associate with them because uh, we are still not in the States to debate with them. But actually, when I see uh, what they're trying to tell, uh, about ISKCON and gurus uh, and all the system going on, it's actually not, uh, which is actually true and which is uh, with proof. So I I was actually searching, researching online for the articles. I also came across uh, a devotee whose name is Hanuman Das. He's a late Hanuman Das because uh, he's not there anymore. He's from uh, Zagreb, Croatia. And yeah, I think he, he so passed many away, and I think about a year ago. He passed away, ago. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, unfortunately due to COVID. Mm. So um, I I came across his articles and to be honest, I have seen deviations through my eyes, such as, uh, you can say, opening uh, philanthropic activities like hospitals uh, and then uh, so many other deviations such as uh if if you've seen if you have seen some pictures online with uh uh it's called i mean i i forgot the sanskrit name but they pour the flowers all the flowers on top of radha krishna's deity and that was not authorized by by Prabhupada. so that's that's another deviation and there are so many other deviations coming so i'll I'll just let it for you to to ask me uh, later. So I'm going to continue with that. Yeah. No, I'm quite intrigued. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling kind of stuck now on the things that you were experiencing and seeing. And um, so you were concerned about deviations happening, some sort of kind of practices. Uh, were there any kind of philosophical deviations that you were concerned about at that point? Absolutely. Yes. So, um at the same time, I was in, in touch with some other devotees, such as uh, the, the the disciples of uh, Radhanath Swami, uh, Lokanath Swami, uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami, uh, as I've also been various ashrams across India. And like that, I had some devotee friends. Uh, some of the deviations I was seeing were the most, the first and most important is Mayavada. So what do I mean by Mayavada here? It's not just by... Uh, the the achintya beda tatwa achintya beda beda tatwa but it's actually mayavada with philosophy which is they are covering up um the knowledge of krishna so uh, for example we have a big prominent personality he's famous all over the world gaur gopal das uh, wherever he goes uh, he he has so much uh, you know people coming to his shows and talks and everything the last thing he does, he doesn't mention Krishna's name even once or bhakti yoga or any sort of philosophy that, that constraints to uh, ISKCON or uh, Prabhupada. So that's one big deviation I was seeing and that started to arise after, uh, I, I was told by but it was started to arise after 2014 or 2015 where uh, many Radhanath Swami disciples, they started to preach uh, anything except Krishna, which I felt it very bizarre because you're uh, dressed in a Gaudiya Vaishnava uh, attire uh, with Tilak and Kantimala and you sh should talk about Krishna. Just like Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, uh, uh, whoever you see, you just tell the names of Krishna, you preach the names of Krishna. 
but that very understanding has been uh, going uh, against the devotees so i feel like that's one big deviation and there are many other deviations uh, which i'll be coming co covering up uh, part by part uh, for example when i was uh, first in vrindavan after three years i spent in bhakti vikas maharaj ashram uh, there was actually a question by a mataji by a female devotee she asked a brahmachari uh, in, a, in a question it was after the lecture she asked uh, brahmachari asking um, can i uh, serve laddu gopal uh, and then brahmachari said no you cannot because uh, it is from another parampara but you still need to follow the rules and regulations which is uh, you can either have a photo of krishna or if your uh, husband is initiated uh, this, uh, or, or having brahmanic initiation then you can have deities at home and then he can uh, serve and you know have deity worship and so on but then sh there was a counter argument there she said i'm sorry i i'm, I'm going to do laddu gopal anyway i'm not going to buy, buy deities of krishna or something so that's one thing i observe which is, tends to uh, show sort of uh, i don't know maybe you can call it feministic or something I, i have no clue but i i felt like she was trying to have a counter argument with brahmachari by not following uh, the the footsteps of the spiritual master and uh, the second thing is i have also seen a lot of me too movement and this was not in uh, bhakti vikas maharaj ashram but in north india i have seen uh, many female devotees trying to get over uh their their uh, respected uh, you know their shiksha gurus or whoever so they were trying to say that oh why can't i do this seva is it just because i'm i'm not qualified i'm i'm a woman that's why so they were trying to get so many hierarchical positions by doing this sort of uh, tactics which i felt wrong because uh, like like shri chaitanya mahaprabhu said trinada pisuni chena we have to be very tolerant just like a tree even if somebody is coming and hitting us with an axe you should still tolerate and you have to have uh, like prabhupad said women should have uh, they should be chaste and shy they should not uh, uh, be over that so they should be very pious and they have to be respectful of course you uh, there are people who might say that you know well they have they might have faced something bad and and i'm not saying that if there is something going on bad with women you don't come up come out and speak up i'm not saying that i'm saying when you're under a uh, certain ashram and you're serving someone just go don't go on top of the authority that's that's not authorized in in vaishnava or gaudiya vaishnava parampara so that's uh, one aspect of deviation i saw and the other aspect was uh, uh actually when i was in the the ashram of hyderabad there was a in a uh, very intriguing incident um so it was since uh, i've been there for like four years it was during the first year i also saw a very strange incident which is where a brahmachari uh, he 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 was a great uh, he was a great uh, devotee he was a brilliant cook i used to love his cuisine who whatever he cooks you know the south indian cuisine i used to love it but what happened is uh, sometimes i used to see him he used to glorify lord shiva and he used to say that like he used to compare lord shiva to krishna which is a, a big uh, no because it's a deviation because if you see the chaitanya sikshastakam uh, it's clearly written that one of the offenses of holy name is to see lord shiva lord brahma lord krishna as equal so that's that's one uh, aspect i saw in him and the second thing what happened with him was so uh, the, the all the devotees all the brahmacharis grihasthas you know, who were living in the ashram they went to a uh, tour maybe in uh, jagannath puri uh, for a festival and uh, basically he was alone in that ashram and he could not uh, so he could not follow his vows what happened is one day he was seen that he was smoking marijuana and the devotees when they came back to the ashram uh, after the trip they actually found some 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 hash tray of that so that was a big uh, shocker 
because he was uh, acting as a devotee, but he wasn't. So that's one uh, thing, the disciples not following vows. And there was uh, many other incidents as well uh, in, in, in case of this. But that's that's another part of deviation. And um, the other part is, uh, nowadays in ISKCON, uh, we have political parties getting involved because they need support. Like in India, you have big, India is known for politics. <laughs> so we have big political parties like BJP run by Narendra Modi, the prime minister, and so, other, so many uh, others. So I, I actually find out one day that actually there were brahmacharis, I, I think somewhere across North India, they were actually going and voting for uh, Narendra Modi. And they were told that they were obliged to do that. <laughs> so they had so much political support and in I'm telling most of the temples in North India, they have political support with the, the BJP. But uh, when you see what Prabhupada said, that uh, no modern day politician is actually truly preaching Krishna consciousness. But if you see Modi, of course, he's trying to support, he's bringing Sanatan Dharma in India. But his, his motive is not to propagate uh, like Vaishnavism hmm. because you can see in South India that he is also going to Shankara Acharya Mat, you know who is the who preached Mayavada uh, long time ago he's, he's on support with them he's also going to some Sahajiyas Mayavadis so he's all mixing so I don't see the connection of being in touch with uh, some, some person like that of course if, if he's going trying to serve the mission then that's appreciable but <clears throat> You should not get involved in politics because you're 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 a devotee. You should mm -hmm. be under your 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 duties. So that's mm -hmm. uh, one thing. And there was another a very interesting uh, video which came up uh, in India. Uh, so there was a, um, I would say he, his name is Bageshwar Dham. His name is Dhirendra Krishna Shastri. Uh, he's he's a very prominent personality in India. He preaches about Ram and stuff, but at the end of the day, his philosophy is Mayavada because he wants to, uh, he has a very Hinduistic ideology, which means uh, uh, like Mayavada philosophy is also okay. Ram is also okay and things like that. So it's it's Mayavada. But when uh, you see Iskon devotees supporting him, mm. then that's a big deviation. Because you're allowing, and he was actually invited to Gopal Krishna Goswami's uh, Maharaj's uh, ashram in New Delhi. And they actually had personal talks. Uh, so yeah, that's that's one, one aspect as well, where you can see, you know, senior devotees getting in contact with Mayavadis. And uh, Radhanath Swami is, of course, a very no well-known personality who met with Sadhguru and people from uh, Ramakrishna Mart. Who are clearly deviants so that's uh, one prominent thing you can also observe in in india uh and uh, another thing is uh yes okay so this is an interesting story as well uh i was actually in vrindavan uh i think it was back in 2018 during another Vyas Puja of uh, bhakti Vigas maharaj so so the special the the thing about bhakti Vigas maharaj is he speaks about so many things going on in ISKCON. But the thing is, uh, if he is going against ISKCON by being in ISKCON, then why don't you create a different organization, a spiritual organization where you can attack ISKCON? So that's, and many of his books got banned as well, such as Mothers, Women, Mothers or Masters, where he's clearly speaking what's the quality of women. And he also got many messages from his foreign disciples. Uh, who are Matajis, say, opposing that book. And GBC, they, they banned his book, I guess, in 2017 or 18, mm. I forgot. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, that's one aspect of Bhakti Vigas Maharaj, just to tell you. Uh, so, I was in Vrindavan, and I'm uh, there is a one famous personality, his disciple of uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Uh, his name is uh, Govind Krishna Das. He's a very prominent personality. You can see social media is massive following so what he does is actually clear sahajya it's sahajyaism he propagates uh, uh, some chanting which was obstructed by which was actually uh, restricted by 
Gaur Kishor Das Baba Ji and then uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, they didn't authorize these bhajans. But he, in his videos, he shows, like, I mean, he's showing his musical skills, but he's not showing them in a proper way. He's trying to propagate uh, Sahajaism, where he brings a, a foreign uh, lady uh, dressed like a devotee in the video, and then he's saying, Radha Rani Lage, it means you're like Radha Rani, I am your Krishna, and things like that. So, Just for yeah. our viewers and listeners at home, can you just define or explain what Sahajism is? Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes. Could you can you just explain for our viewers what what Sahajism is? What it, what it means? Yes. Okay. Sure. So Sahajia, the very meaning of Sahajia is uh, Sahaj. Sahaj means easy. Sahajia means sa a devotee who takes it easily, who takes it cheaply, the devotional service uh, onto the lotus feet of Krishna. So that's basically the meaning of Sahajia. Who who are the deviants? And there is a big, um, uh, actually, the, the mission of Bhakti Siddhan Saraswati Thakur, his life motive is to destroy Sahajiyas. Mm. And there were so many heroic stories where he was in debates with many Sahajiyas. And once he said, when he was in Vrindavan, he was telling that, I don't see any devotee serious here. They are not devotees, they are Sahajiyas. So... Uh, that's that's one way to see. Basically, Sahajiyas, what they do is they try to think uh, directly with Gopi Bhava, the topmost devotees of Krishna. They think that, oh, I'm Gopi and he's Krishna, so I need to enjoy him. So all these mundane thoughts, basically, these, they, these Sahajiyas do. And they have so much Sampradaya, like in uh, Kolkata, I mean, in Mayapur, in Vindavan, Jagannath Puri. So they are very prominent, the, the Sahajiyas. So, yeah, so so Sahajiya Kirtans are clearly obstructed by uh, any Acharya. And Prabhupada once, uh, he had his disciples. Uh, they saw some of his disciples, they were associating with uh, Vrindavan Babaji's. And he clearly wrote a letter to them by saying, do not uh, go and listen uh, Gopi Bhava, Radha Bhava with them, because your devotional service will be in shatters. You cannot progress in bhakti. Because our philosophy is dasa dasa anu dasa, which means I'm servant of servant of servants. And that's how I, I get Krishna's mercy. Mm -hmm. I cannot get it directly. I should be servant, servant, servant. So that's that's the understanding of that. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, so he propagates Sahaja Bhajans, uh, Govind Krishna Das, in his YouTube videos. And uh, it's all Sahajas, honestly. <laughs> So uh, I wanted, once I saw him in Vrindavan uh, Krishna Balram temple, just outside that, I actually went towards him and I told him that, uh, with respect, that, can I please uh, talk to you for a second? And uh, he said, I'm sorry, I, I can't do it because I'm, I'm busy, but you can text me on Facebook. I said, okay, I did that. And then I, I sent him a message. Till now, there is no reply uh, of what deviations he was doing. So uh, this shows how uh, ignorant the devotees mm. are. Mm. They don't know the <clears throat> philosophy, the true philosophy of, of Krishna, which is uh, falling on the footsteps of uh, our Gaudiya version of Acharyas. But rather, they want to jump. It's called Markata Vairagya, which is you're jumping like a monkey. So this is one thing I observed uh, with, with many devotees, actually. Uh, and uh, yeah, so coming back to the topic about uh, how Radhanath Swami's disciples, they are uh, propagating mundane motivation, which is, mm. which is you know, clearly obstructed by uh, Prabhupada. So you have uh, some famous people like Gauranga Das, uh, and then uh, you have Amog Leela Das. They're very prominent in India, uh, also across the world. So they were invited for various podcasts. Like you have big, big influencers in India who are getting invited. And uh, it happened to be ISKCON as well, some ISKCON devotees. And when you see the videos, uh, they actually don't speak about Hare, Hare Krishna, uh, Mahamantra or uh, they don't speak about Achintya Bheda Veda Tattva. 
bhakti yoga no words like this come out i speak about mundane yoga like hatha yoga all this mundane yoga and there is no mention of uh, krishna at all so this is one one big deviation you can see uh, you know across various podcasts what they do and you also have people like jay shetty who is who's very famous across the uk he was actually uh, under radhanath swami serving but later he he just gave up his uh, his vows and then he is now a motivational speaker so why this happens is because you don't preach krishna tatva as it is what was given by prabhupad and many acharyas and that's how the bhakti creeper inside you it dies you are not pouring water inside your heart so that it blossoms so in in the, this is one reason why many devotees they they are they are going deviant they are they are deviating in the path and that's also you can see it with the new neophyte devotees who are going and joining joining the ashrams so that's one big thing happening uh and just just on this context i want to quote a beautiful story of ramanuja acharya when ramanuja acharya he was given sanyasa uh his guru he he told a mantra on his ears he whispered saying om namo narayana and he said that please keep it to yourself you keep keep it con- confidential but in his heart ramanuja acharya he was thinking that if i can take this mantra and take sins of everyone and just give that mantra to everyone take their sins that's the success of my life so immediately after he got sanyas he went outside his ashram where he got sanyas and he shouted to everyone listen everyone i am going to chant a mantra which is going to de- deliver you from all the the material desires and you're going to uh, get narayana for sure uh, and he chanted om namo narayana so whenever you you are given a platform like this you have to preach about krishna or narayana for, for sure because these kind of opportunities are very rare because you have a massive audience and what what are you going to do you're going to speak about motivational stuff they are never going to know krishna mm. and this is how mm. with maya the philosophy gets covered and can you yeah. um It's been great listening to you by the way. Um I I've loved how you've just kind of gone through that list of kind of deviations or or uh things that you're really concerned about. Um can you uh, so I want to ask some questions I want to follow up on some of the points you you've you've mentioned. Can you just but you said something just now that really interested me and I just want to c- kind of check what you said. You said that that Jay Shetty is no longer he, following his vows or something. Did you say something like that? uh yeah yeah i mean he's no longer his con devotee i mean he's he's just in touch with radhanath swami but just for motivational things he doesn't speak about krishna mm, mm. and neither with his disciples you can check his podcast actually like uh, i saw some podcast of jay shetty where he had goranga das uh, amog lila das and, and even radhanath swami i never saw any krishna's uh, name or bhakti yoga mentioned there so it's just a mention of a motivation how to earn more money and just like prabhupad said come donkeys <laughs> mm. so i i don't see any krishna there and if somebody is uh, philosophically interested in gaudiya vaishnavism then he would just sleep in this kind of lectures because what is motivation oh you cannot do this go do it if you if you cannot do it just give a slap and do it that's all that's motivation but honestly that's nothing as compared to if somebody is interested in the gaudiya vaishnava philosophy because he is crying for krishna he he is waiting for that moment when the speaker will speak about glorify about krishna or his incarnations so that's how it is well i'm i'm glad you've just said that because i i thought i was the only one um i i um i'm going to upset a lot of people when i say this i mean i I've, i've got <laughs> i upset a lot of people anyway but whenever i used to uh, so back to vidanta mana which is the biggest iskon temple in the uk um when i used to go regularly uh there's the number of reasons now i don't go so often but when i used to go regularly and when radna swami used used to come and talk i used to just fall asleep uh, i was just a bit kind of oh you know i'm i'm waiting i'm waiting for the something to happen here And exactly yes. and i've listened to this story and i'll be looking at the time or oh, i've got to go soon i wish you you know get to the point 
Um, and I feel terrible saying that, but it's true. And uh, it's like a, it was like a chat show or like a, let's tell a story. It's like being at school, like at preschool and exactly. the teacher's reading a book and there's a lovely story and this is what happens and all this happiness and loveliness at the end. And I, I, I actually didn't feel inspired. I, I just felt a bit bored. Um, yeah. it's just, I want it, I want a motivational speaker who's going to encourage me to follow Prabhupada, to share Krishna consciousness with the public, you know, who I feel inspired to go and distribute books and organize Hare Krishna events and festivals. You know, I, I, I don't want a speaker who's going to put me to sleep. Um, True. so, so I have a number of follow up points. So let's start, let's continue with that one. Um, I used to be able to, I probably, I probably still could if I, if I was put to the task, but years ago I was able to kind of, <laughs> I was able to, I went through a phase of guessing who somebody's guru was based on that particular disciple or that particular devotee, like their mood or how they behaved. And I think 90% of the time I, I guessed correct based on, you know, uh, based on a number of things like Years ago in Iskon in the 80s, we had the zonal acharya system. Yes. Where you had to take initiation from a particular guru based on the country you were living in. And believe it or not, in the UK, that still happens unofficially. Uh, there are certain temples that highly recommend you take initiation from certain gurus because the temple president is a disciple of that particular guru. So you can see this trend happening. So if you live in Wales, which is a part of the UK, uh, <laughs> there's a good chance you'll take initiation from a certain guru because most of the people at the temple in Wales are disciples of that guru. If you live in East London and you're of Indian heritage, there's a good chance you'll take initiation from another guru who's different from the mm. one in, in Wales. Um, and... Also, I have to say, there is something, um, uh, I need to watch what I say now. <laughs> no, you're going to go ahead. There is um, something uh, that a number of disciples of Radna Swami have in common. There is this trend of telling stories that, that don't really end in anything motivational or for me anything that's particularly Gaudiya Vaishnav and um, uh, often a lot of the um, big names that we will talk about Jay Shetty, uh, Gorkopal, uh, Prabhu uh, and others they will be disciples of, of, of Radhanath Swami and they've kind of I guess inherited his his practice of talking about all these stories, but not really getting to the point of what is Krishna consciousness or, or what is the essence of the Bhagavad Gita? Why did Srila Prabhupada come to the West or travel around the globe, sacrificing so much for his spiritual master and his spiritual master before him? And I remember on, on the very few occasions, I didn't do it often, when I'd sit through a talk by uh, Gorkopal, uh, uh, Prabhu, I it was like being on a chat show or in a chat show, like we'd be the audience laughing at jokes. And I'd be there, I'd be there for a whole hour at, at Bhaktivedanta Mana, just sitting to listening to a, a, a comedian telling jokes. And it was great to see all these people in the temple, by the way. And, and most of them were of Indian heritage. But I was thinking, yeah. wouldn't it be better if we went out on a Harinam? There's yes. 200 people in this temple room. Why are we sitting here listening to this comedian? Let's go out on a Harinam. Let's go out and share the message of Prabhupada with the Western public. Yeah. And, and that, that would be my concern. And those, I think, are some of the, of the same criticisms that are leveled against Jay Shetty, is that he's just not, you know, he's not using that opportunity to share the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita um, with and the, he has how many like 10 million 15 million yeah. followers yeah so um so so i've i've definitely um noticed that um and it's a it's a it's something that happens in a lot of spiritual organizations you do become like your spiritual master or your guru you know rightly or wrongly and um you know and and yeah 
Um, absolutely. Um, another point I want to pick up on is this link between ISKCON and party politics. Um, yeah. So this is definitely happening also in the UK. Um, so, yeah, you look surprised. It, it, it happens everywhere. And um, so uh, I always have to think about what I say before I say on this podcast. So a number of senior people at Bhaktivedanta Manor um, in different positions, I won't say which positions they're in, are also donors to the Conservative Party who are in power in the UK. Um, and there has been this, I would say, unhealthy link for many years between um, ISKCON in the UK and the Conservative Party. Um, and I'm not, um, so in the UK, that's the right wing party. Um, and I'm not yep. necessarily criticizing that party. I'm just saying there's that link. Um, and it looks like in the UK, um, we're probably going to have a change of government at the next election um, for a lot of reasons. And the left of centre party are probably going to get into power for, for a number of reasons. So I'm interested to see whether ISKCON then develops a relationship with the, with the left of centre party um, and whether they start kind of like um, cuddling up to them, you know, trying to get in, yeah. get in their pockets. Um, exactly. Yeah. I remember back in 2019, we had, so December 2019, we had a very, very divisive general election in Britain. Uh, I mean, all general elections are divisive, uh, but we had a very divisive one because it was largely over whether the UK should stay uh, within the EU or not. And often mm. people would vote down those lines. And my view is, like yours and, and I think like Prabhupada's is that we shouldn't really get involved in party politics and we should stay neutral if if we can. But what Bhaktivedanta Mana did, so in the UK, general elections are always on a Thursday. And in, in Britain, there is a, a law or the rules are that in the three weeks up to election day, the media has to be fair. The media has to, if you're going to invite the leader of one party, you have to invite the leaders of the others. It's only fair. And really, all charities or religious organizations should follow the same rules. So you can invite politicians, but you have to invite all of them. It's fair. So on the Sunday before the general election, Back to Vedanta Manor invites Boris Johnson to visit. So this is, <laughs> he was the prime minister at the time. He was a very, he's a very charismatic, I'll compliment him there. Um, and he, he was, he is though a very divisive figure. So you had him at Fakti Vedanta Manor with Priti Patel, who's, who was the home secretary. So she had, and has a reputation for being very hard line on immigrants. She's also of, of Gujarati heritage. Uh, so a lot of the, Congregation members in Bhakti Vedanta Mana are, are, are Gujarati. So you've got Boris Johnson and Priti Patel four days before a divisive national election going around Bhakti Vedanta Mana saying Hare Krishna to people, right? So, well, that's, so uh... In one sense, this is great, but why didn't you do this 12 months before? You know, why did you wait four days before? So what they should have done, they should have invited the leader of the Labour Party, the leader of the Green Party, the leader of the Liberal Democrats. So they should have been fair. So um, this unfortunately happens in Britain as well. And I think it's for this reason, I'm looking forward to the change of government in the UK. Uh, and ISCON is going to have to really kind of change track. Uh, yeah. Because... <laughs> Uh, generally, um, I've got to watch what I say now. Generally, the Indian community in the UK um, doesn't support doesn't support the left. They support the right, and that's that. Yeah. Um, um, that that isn't historically the case. Back in the nineteen seventies, the Indian community supported the left because a lot of the Indian community came to Britain and the left, uh, the Labour Party, were very much in favour of immigration, immigrants coming here to help build Britain. 
Uh, but now the immigrants are here and we're on, <laughs> we're on second and third generation, uh, the Indian community has changed its mind. <laughs> they, they're now supporting the right. So um, we'll, we'll just have to see uh, what happens. Uh, and I will sit back and observe um, with that. The other point I want to pick up on um, is you talked about Bhaktivakar Swami. Yes. And I, I, I think you made the point that Bhaktivakar Swami should would be better off leaving ISKCON and maybe creating his own mat or his own group. Do you, do you want yeah. to kind of elaborate on that a bit? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Bhaktivakar Swami is like a big figure in ISKCON. Uh, for banning books, banning lectures, <laughs> is he is really to the point. He speaks about criticism. Mm. You can check his YouTube channel and his lectures. He's mostly speaking about guru issues such as Vaishnavi gurus, you know, female diksha gurus, and then um, so many uh, like, for example, uh, disciples not following vows, gurus not following vows, and so many other controversial topics going on in Iskon. And he puts it, he has an elaborate lecture for like hour and two. Uh, but my, my, my answer is like, if you are really concerned about ISKCON, and if you think that ISKCON is not going to the right path, why don't you create your own movement? And, and you, you take your disciples there and, you know, maybe spread it across the world. That's a very great strategy to do that. But he still, the, also, there, there are reasons why he's not doing that. Because... He still supports book changes. You can uh, see like in Bhagavad Gita alone, you have 5,000 changes. Can you believe it? Only in Bhagavad Gita. And what do you speak about Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrit and many other small books. So uh, so like he he's supporting them. Uh, and, and the person who is changing these is Jay Dvaita Swami. Uh, who is also a supporter of uh, many wrongdoers in ISKCON, such as uh, Lokanath Swami, uh, Bhaktivedya Purna Swami, and so on, Indrajumna Swami, and so on. So, uh, if you see his strategy, he's still friends with some members who are, I would say, who are not really trying to preach Prabhupada's message. Uh, so in, in that way, I, I think it's, I would say it's wishy-washy, honestly, his strategy, because at the time you, you speak something against this con and then again, you're friends with this con. So what's going on? Mm. So yeah, the best answer to this would be to actually create your own movement rather than being in his con. So that's what I perceive, like what I think would be better for him. I, um, I'm I'm going to find that sounds optimistic. I, I'm going to find the next ten or twenty years very interesting observing ISKCON. Um, so I have an interest in the history of religion, uh, in terms of uh, you know my degrees in comparative religion, and I've studied uh, as much as I have time to study uh, the different uh, schisms. So schisms are religious divisions. You know, I've looked at the history of Christianity and different divisions. And one thing I think. ISKCON has been successful at is largely over the last since Prabhupada physically left is largely over the last 45 years there have been very few schisms or there's been very few major schisms and I'm surprised by that when you look at the the arguments within ISKCON and I actually think it's as if this is a compliment if, if the leaders of ISKCON are listening that you've done very well to hold the ship together uh, without it completely sinking. But at some point, it might be another 10 years, those schisms are going to happen. And it will yep. probably be when, so the current, a lot of the current gurus or sannyasis are men in their uh, 70s, early 70s, late 70s, late 60s. And within the next 10 to 15 years, they will they will be leaving their bodies. A bit of yes. Harry, Harry Krishna jargon, leaving their bodies. And one of the some of the ones I'm 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 intrigued. This sounds really weird. I'm talking like this, but some of the one of the some of them that I'm quite intrigued about is what happens when Jayapataka Swami leaves his body. He has yep. a huge following um, that is largely kind of Indian, Bangladeshi. Um, yeah. 
there's there's and then you've got the Radnaf Swami group. What happens with that group? Do they go off and form their own um, mat? And then the other one um, is are the kind of I'd say the followers of of Riddhayananda Maharaj, the Krishna West type. Krishna West, group. yes, that's you know that's a big deviation, right? Uh, there. In terms of does Krishna West in the next ten or twenty years become its own separate group that's separate from ISKCON? Um, so I'm just intrigued when you kind of look at look at all those splinters that that might happen um, in the future. Um, can I, I just want to ask a question because you said a name uh, and I want to just come and follow up on that. You mentioned the name. Oh. Indi- <laughs> we can talk about anything on this podcast. Um, there's no censorship. Um, you, talk, you, you mentioned Indi- Indi- Swami. Yes. Why did you mention him? So uh, the reason why I mentioned him, uh, there are a couple of incidents. The first incident is uh, I have seen him uh, and his disciples in Vrindavan. And somewhere in my heart, I felt like uh, they might not be following the footsteps of Prabhupada because I have seen their disciples uh, having uh, uh, chocolate, uh, chocolate ice cream which is uh, actually restricted in ISKCON if you're a Gaudiya Vaishnava, because chocolate is cocoa. It comes from cocoa, which is an intoxicant. And uh, chocolate is not allowed in ISKCON. And the second thing is uh, their disciples. So, I mean, his disciples, sorry. Uh, So his disciples, they are a big uh, internet figure. I I, I don't know. I forgot the name of one couple uh, who are... Who the the girl she's I think Russian and the the guy he's uh, Indian with big muscles and you know like uh, Dronacharya <laughs> so uh, he's uh, like every video you see on Instagram you don't feel like they are serving Krishna or or in the mood of separation or you know the the natural uh, survivorship mood we have you don't see that in their videos all you see is them acting like Radha Krishna. It's like she is wearing gopi dress and everything and he's embracing her. So I personally believe that things like this should not be published online uh, because it's it shows that you don't really read Bhagavad Gita. As Bhagavad Gita says, we are not this body, we are spirit soul. That's the first ever teaching of Bhagavad Gita. So how can the disciples who are initiated go against that? So that's these are some aspects in which I I I, I mentioned Indudhima Swami, and uh, there are plenty of news about Indudhima Swami how he uh, had some some cases before. Uh, so that's that's why I mentioned him because mm. he's also one prominent figure. Mm. So in the end. Did you end up? Did you make the decision to leave Iscon? Yes, I made the decision to leave Iscon because I want to. As as we come across Prabhupada's books, his philosophy, his uh, his heart, literally, you realize that when you see through his eyes, through his vision, you can see things clearly. What's going on in Iscon? And today there are deviations going on everywhere another aspect i also wanted to mention uh, is uh, when you were saying about the politics about indians in the uk uh, i also came across one podcast where um, prabhu was explaining how uh, iscon is getting indianized and I, I i actually agree with that because when i come here in the west of, of course you can say not every temple is like that but when you see in perspective of uh, local people here uh, they say it's an Indian movement. Why do we say it's an Indian movement? No, it's not Indian movement. Prabhupada has never mentioned in his books that uh, this is an Indian movement. This is International Society for Krishna Consciousness. It is for every person who is a jiva or a, or, or, or an entity in this uh, material world. There is no race, no nothing. It's for everyone. So that's one aspect also I, I find it very intriguing is that ISKCON is not really being resp- re- represented properly in the West. And of course, like, like you said, Hridayan Das Goswami, who was 
uh, propagating Krishna West uh, and changing the dress uh, as he was thinking, oh, it seemed Indian, like Dhoti Kurta, uh, all the Vaishnav Tilak and all you put things like that. He He's not propagating that in, I believe, in America anymore. So slowly you can see like Iskon is actually getting Indianized and uh, that's that's actually very sad. That's not how Prabhupada wanted. What do you think for you for you personally? What do you think is the future of ISKCON, uh, particularly in India? Um. So, I believe that, like you said, there will be many isms going on. I think there will be devotees who would uh, maybe get banned in ISKCON and might form another. Uh, I don't know. Another movement. Uh, the other way I see it emerging is it will be very political. It will be very politically sided, which means it will take sides of politics in order to get power. For instance, you have Iskon Bangalore. Uh, there is a very famous case between Iskon Bangalore and Iskon Mumbai, along with uh, Iskon India. They had a case about uh, centralizing Iskon, and they had they were they went to court. They had lawsuits and everything. So Iskon Bangalore, they are a different entity. They are uh, mm. uh, Ritviks, mm. basically, who believe that Prabhupada is uh, the last Acharya. So uh, they build they build their own, uh, I would say, their own temple in Iskon Bangalore, which was about to get uh, confiscated by uh, the, the 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 authority in Mumbai, and uh, they wanted to centralize Iskon, which is every temple is a part of uh, Iskon India. But later, I, I I have seen that they actually I think they they didn't win the case I guess and then Bangalore remained a different entity. Uh, so I think the 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 both is Ritviks and Iskon I think they might take political sides so that you know whoever does the best would get more India or I would say more temples more devotees. So that's another aspect. And third a third aspect I would see uh, the future of Iskon is. It, like the internal matter, uh, back when Prabhupada said that uh, the problem will happen when we will have our own movement uh, infiltrated by Sahajiyas and Mayavadis. And that is actually happening today. And it's going to grow even more where people will have lack of understanding of uh, Krishna consciousness. Uh, they might not uh, like the philosophy and they might buy a lot of uh, mundane books of Gaurgopal Das or where there is no mention of Krishna and just doing mundane motivational stuff. And Sahajiyas, which is uh, mixing with uh, uh, Vrindavan Babaji's or Mayapuri's and all the deviant uh, groups you have in, in all the holy places. I think there will be a mix of that. And I think gurus will uh, propagate anything they want to get as many followers as possible. So I think these are some aspects I see how ISKCON will emerge in India. Mm -hmm. There are certain there are there are a number of things happening now where ISKCON India is uh, wanting to be separate from the rest of ISKCON. Uh, I, I mean, one example is particularly around child protection uh, because of a lot, a lot of the issues around Lokanath. There is this now. I, I think it's already happened. It's not a desire anymore that that the ISKCON India Child Protection Office is completely separate from the, the the global Child Protection Office because they want to deal with child protection or rather not deal with child protection um, in a different way. So they're already trying to be separate from the rest of kind of global ISKCON uh, for, for kind of different reasons. Um, for you personally, in terms of, of leaving ISKCON, how did that feel and how and how difficult was that for you? So yeah, that's uh, that's actually something I wanted to talk about as well. Um, like when when like let let's see in this perspective, when you give your heart, your time, and your consciousness under someone's feet, or some or you just dedicate yourself to someone, and you literally feel like you know you you will be progressing and this is the success of, success of your life, but then you get betrayed. Uh, doesn't feel good, of course. And it, it was a hard phase living is gone because I had so many doubts in my mind, like what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. So I personally had a breakdown 
uh, and somehow I I did not leave Prabhupada's books because they were one there it was one small ignite in the darkness which I would say Prabhupada books were my saver whenever I used to read them I still kept reading them I still read them and that's literally one thing I would say which didn't shook my faith towards Krishna and his lotus feet uh, and somehow or another I started to research online find answers and that's how I also found your podcast so yeah I think the main thing for devotees who have left this con is to have uh, faith in Krishna of course Prabhupada and always be curious looking for answers because there's there's nothing which is going to go vacant so that, that's that's what happened to me and how how are you how are you I'm really sorry to hear that you've had a you had a breakdown um I feel really really sad to hear that how how are you doing and how are you feeling now now I actually feel uh, great I don't have any issues because uh, the people I used to believe in, uh, I don't associate with them anymore, uh, of course, because I'm in the West. And uh, um, the se second thing is I have, so I have, I, I always had this thing inside my heart that I want to take philosophy, Krishna consciousness, and go with it in every phase of life. And that that eagerness to read philosophy of what Prabhupada has written that literally is like a is like a savior to me, so uh, that really saved me. And now I'm I'm all I'm always open and I'm looking for answers. So I would say I I'm I'm happy now. Mm. One of the things that I discovered um, probably about two years ago was that, that there is a whole network of devotees around the world that are followers of Prabhupada uh, that take shelter of Prabhupada that are committed to serving Prabhupada but but serve Prabhupada and who adore Prabhupada independently from the institution known as ISKCON and I mean I use the word institution because the term ISKCON can mean different things to different people so you've got the institution but also there's what Prabhupada said that ISKCON is wherever the holy names are chanted so a lot of it's about semantics so the use of language in terms of how we how we describe or define ISKCON but there's a whole lot of devotees a huge number of devotees that are serving Prabhupada independently from GBC ISKCON and I, I know a number of projects around Europe uh, that are independent from GBC ISKCON and that are doing very well with preaching, with book distribution, and they're growing. They're growing very organically because they're just being, they have the freedom to get on and do stuff. They don't, don't have to get permission to go on a Harinam. They don't have to get permission to distribute books. Um, they're just doing it. And uh, in the UK, we have quite a lot of those independent projects now, and they're making a difference. And it's quite liberating to discover them and, and meet them. Um, those that follow the Harry Krishna Project on Facebook and YouTube will see that I've been doing a tour. I've been touring those projects <laughs> for, it feels like forever, but for at least a year, visiting them and meeting them. And um, I've been to France. I've been around the UK. Uh, I should be maybe visiting Germany soon, possibly a uh, bit of a hint there. Um, so it's quite wonderful and it's very liberating. And um, yeah, so, and it's also very healing to, to learn and discover that Prabhupada exists everywhere, that, that, that you know, Lord Chaitanya exists everywhere. And you, you don't have to be part of an institution to serve. You know, you can serve Prabhupada in your hometown, in your village, in your city, uh, you don't have to get permission from anybody to do it. <laughs> you know, it's it's quite wonderful. Um, okay, I'm conscious that we've been chatting for for way over an hour. Um, is there anything that you want to share that you don't think we've covered in this podcast? Um, yeah, so I want to share some learnings I personally have researched and I've also talked to some senior devotees about for somebody who has faced uh, you know like a bad experience in ISKCON or who left the movement for some reason or who have faced some 
very bad things with his con leaders uh so i i will i will cover them how yes please one can still serve prabhupad not being in his con so the first thing actually is not leaving the process of bhakti lord chaitanya literally came to this world to spread hari naam and it's param vijayate it's always the winning it's always the topmost uh yagya you can do which is sankirtan yagya and it will always win so never lose your uh, process in bhakti uh, or faith in bhakti and the second thing is to constantly read and hear prabhupad's books lectures uh, or letters he has written uh, because that's literally our kavacha our savior so please do that and the third thing is don't lose faith in the process like whatever the, the, the i'm sure all this news and articles and experience you have faced i'm sure it is because krishna wants to show you the reality uh, as prabhupad said that uh, as is as is also written in bhagavad gita by the way out of millions of souls only 1000 will come to know about me and out of those 1000 only one will be successful to come towards my my service or to uh, go back to godhead so i'm sure whatever is happening with everyone it's already destined it's it's uh, happening with krishna's mercy so you don't have to feel bad about that and uh, the fourth thing is uh, so i think this one thing i have observed and seen many prabhupada disciples who are not with this con uh, doing is they are staying neutral they are neutral with devotees they do visit temples and if they are banned with temples of course they go to other congregations where you don't have iskon mention they try to stay neutral even if he is another disciple of someone or wh- whoever they try to they try to stay neutral and they serve uh, they still serve the lord in some way or another for example uh, by sankirtan yagya or maybe serving devotees so i think being neutral is is one point i would mention because having uh, the darshan of krishna is also very necessary in the process of bhakti so you if of course if you are banned from temple you can make a temple at home it's not a big issue but uh, i think krishna has given us intelligence uh, so this is the fifth point uh, which is to reject what is wrong and to accept what is right uh of course in in the in the process of krishna consciousness we will have various siksha gurus who give us knowledge who give us wisdom you accept the essence for example if somebody talks about uh some krishna tatva or some past times of krishna you take that essence and you reject something which doesn't seem all right for example if somebody is glorifying loknath swami or some 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 guru who has uh, not following his vows you can reject them you can reject them and you can take the essence so i think that's one point i feel is also necessary with uh, anyone who has left the movement and still wants to serve prabhupad uh, and the sixth thing is uh, avoid any sort of gatherings where you see a uh, mundane insanity <laughs> for example in a <laughs> in some rath yatras i have seen that devotees they play hollywood or bollywood music that's that's pretty bizarre like that's that's mundane music so you should avoid these kind of events you are there you catch the jagannath rath you serve him you pray to him take prasad and that's all don't involve in anything else so i believe these are some six points uh, which are which would be helpful at least for somebody who still has faith in prabhupad and gauri vaishnavism and left is gone and always keep looking for answers be curious well i have to say rahul i find your story very inspiring uh because th- despite the um things you've experienced despite the things you've seen despite the, the rejection i think you've probably had um i, I think that you, the fact that you know, and despite having a breakdown as well the fact that you're still cl- clinging on to krishna consciousness and following krishna consciousness and following prabhupada is is a wonderful um 
inspiration you know I've, and you're still smiling as well you've been smiling smiling mostly the whole way through this podcast which is great and and i can see that you're genuinely happy because you're you know you're on the right path the path of back to yoga so i find your story very inspiring um and i know i don't want to exaggerate and say hundreds but i know lots of people that have left uh the institution of iscon uh because of uh traumatic experiences uh, because they've been bullied, because they've been abused, because they've had their money stolen, uh, because they have uncovered uh, something that their guru was doing wrong. And of course, Iskon takes the guru's side rather than their side. Just to, just I'm sorry to cut you off. I just, uh, before I came to your podcast, I saw a post in uh, uh, the Vedic Inquiry group in Facebook there was a devotee who put a, a story which happened, I think, in ISKCON, uh, um, I think Nasik. It's across Uttar Pradesh in nor northern part of India, uh, not far away from Vrindavan. So uh, uh, what happened is one new devotee, she went uh, to the temple as, you know, curious souls who want to uh, get in touch with Krishna. Uh, what happened is she had a f uh, festival, some Sunday, Sunday program. And there was a brahmacharis who came to her and they gave her, you know, they explained the philosophy in, in, in brief and they gave her some cards for other events. And so did she come to the other events and then she started liking the philosophy. He took her number and then he, uh, you know, saved it in, on his phone and he added him to added her to various groups uh, so that, you know, she can still be in touch with Krishna. Uh, but he was also doing some wrong things such as he was trying to flirt with her and she was he was he and despite being a brahmachari he was trying to do some stuff which are not like with regulated senses and she was telling that he also used to drink and smoke uh, and do all these other mundane activities uh, and at the end what she did is she didn't feel comfortable and uh, he, he he was telling if you don't marry me then you will go to hell, you will have sins and everything. So he was brainwashing her, basically. Mm. And uh, at the end, she she was also actually chastised by other Matajis who are living in, in that temple and saying, you have to do this. So it's, it's a big, it's, 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 it's sad, actually. You know, when, when some sincere souls, they come and then we try and do some stuff like this, that's, that's very wrong. So I believe, you know, just accept the fact that you you are doing something wrong and stay away don't don't take a position uh above your limit so just accept and maybe become a grihastha don't become a brahmachari and preach nonsense like this because we are non different from other uh, deviant movements because Prabhupada is is shaktivesh avata so we have to respect his teachings and follow the path of, of bhakti so uh yeah that's that's one incident i wanted to cover Thank you. Um, and thank you for kind of finishing off at the end there with some 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 inspiring ideas about how we can still be firmly connected with Prabhupada through not leaving Bhakti and being neutral. You know, I, I think I think those are really good kind of ideas because some people will need some guidance. You know, people contact me on a regular basis. They feel just because they're having a, a bad time in ISKCON or a bad experience in ISKCON and other mats as well, but particularly ISKCON, that they feel that their faith is completely shattered. And I, I try and give them support, encouragement that it's not shattered uh, iskon is just an institution within the world on planet earth um it's not the be all and end all thankfully and um you know lord krishna and Prabhupada are, are, are bigger than that or greater than that um so um and i'm encouraged also because you're in nice uh which is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful part of the world and i i don't think there's much association in nice is there not at all I am actually looking for souls like you, but you're in the UK. Yeah. So Nice is, uh, I would say it's a beautiful place with nature, but it's not, it's completely material. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can, sky's the imagination. Yeah. And, and we certainly, before I hit the record button, we were talking about Krishna consciousness in France and uh, there are other groups as well. Um, uh, so Iskon has got uh, at least two temples uh this the there's the radical in paris in paris yeah. and new mayapur which is new um, mayapur, yeah. 
which is the center in a very of, remote village yeah, yeah I, I i think it's an hour away from the nearest airport um i've, I've never been uh and then you've got the rada creeper mission which is in rouen which is northwest france uh, and then I believe, uh, so Shrouti Maharaj, who's in the Narayan Maharaj mat, I think he's near Nice, and I think he has a following there. I've certainly seen photos of a, a, a Gaudiya Vaishnav gathering near Nice some time ago, but I have no contact with them. You and I can certainly have a conversation offline about that. Um, I met Shrouti Maharaj when he was in the UK. He is a Pra Prabhupada disciple, by the way, uh, who then who I believe took sannyas from Naraya Maharaj. So as all of the followers of this podcast will know that the Gaudiya Vaishnav family is very like this. It's like a big tree and lots of branches and it's all connected in different ways. Um, but we can chat about that kind of um, offline. Um, but um, Rahul, it's been great to have you as the guest on this week's podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's a pleasure to talk to you. I was encouraged by how um enthusiastic you were about being a guest um <laughs> you know that's all your humility <laughs> um so thank you for that and if i'm sure what will happen is after every podcast i always get feedback and i'm sure if uh, anybody wants to get in touch with you i will pass them your way um if they get in touch with with me uh, here at the Hare Krishna Project after this has been broadcast. Uh, so a big thank you to Rahul Prabhu for being the 120th guest on the Hare Krishna Project podcast. Um, do not forget, uh, viewers and listeners at home or wherever you watch this podcast, uh, do not forget if you're watching this on YouTube to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So you keep updated about future podcasts from the Hare Krishna Project or if you're watching this on Facebook, please do like or follow the Hare Krishna Project Facebook page so you can be kept updated about future podcasts as well. As you know, we always have a range of guests on this podcast and we certainly have a range coming up, <laughs> I can assure you. Uh, so until next week, I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Hare Krishna.